I spent the last few weeks going down a rabbit hole that honestly left me a bit uneasy. I always thought hardware wallets were the safe end of the spectrum. You move your coins off exchanges, put them on a ledger or treasure, lock it in a drawer and you're done, right? But the more I read audits, incident reports and real world cases, the clearer it became that hardware wallets are not a magic force field. They are the most powerful security tools in crypto, but the system is only as strong as the person using them. Before we get into it, quick disclaimer. Nothing in this video is financial advice or security advice tailored to your situation. I am just sharing what I have learned from research and my own experience. And while we are here, if you find this kind of content useful, make sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel. I have more long form security, trading and research content coming. And subscribing is the easiest way to make sure you don't miss it. And also it helps the channel grow. Let me start with the biggest mindset shift I had while researching this. Most people imagine some genius hacker breaking the cryptography inside a hardware wallet. In reality, almost all losses come from things around the device, not from the chip itself. The problem is usually fake devices, poison supply chains, malware on the computer, social engineering, or how people store their seed phrases. The hardware is often the last thing that fails. The human is usually the first. The first weak spot is the supply chain. If a hardware wallet is tampered with, cloned or swapped before it gets to you, every clever security feature inside it becomes useless. There have been real cases where scammers bought genuine devices, opened them, pre-installed their own seed phrase, printed that phrase in a fake manual, sealed everything again and sold it as new. The victim followed the instructions, wrote down the pre-printed words, sent crypto to the wallet and of course, the attacker already had that phrase backed up and just emptied it later. The fix is simple, but it takes discipline. I only buy hardware wallets directly from the official website or a clearly authorized reseller. When it arrives, I assume it might be malicious until proven otherwise. I use the official app. I let the device generate the seed phrase on its own and I never trust anything pre-printed in the box. If a wallet ever arrives with a ready-made recovery phrase or a default seed card, that is an instant red flag. Once the device is genuine and set up correctly, the next threat is physical access. I used to think if someone steals my hardware wallet, they still need my pin, so I'm safe. That's only half true. A weak pin, a simple pattern like one, two, three, four, or a short code that someone can shoulder surf is not much of a brainer. And if someone with skills gets long-term access to your device, there are research grade attacks where they open it, mess with the chips, or try fault injection to bypass protections. I'm not saying every petty thief has a lab in their basement, but I do not want to bet my savings on that. That is why I always use the longest pin my device allows. And for any serious amount of money, I usually enable a passphrase, that so-called 25th word. That way the visible wallet is not necessarily the real one with my main holdings. Now. Let us move from the physical world into the firmware and software world, because this is where the most exotic threats live. During my research, I kept coming back to one idea. If the firmware on your hardware wallet is compromised, the game is basically over. One of the most interesting examples I read about was a concept called Dark Skippy. The idea is that malicious firmware does not need to steal your seed directly. Instead, it can mess with the randomness of your transaction signature so that every time you sign something, a few bits of your secret leak through the signature itself. Over a small number of transactions, someone watching the blockchain can reconstruct your entire seed phrase just from those signatures. To pull something like that off, an attacker would first need to push their own firmware onto your device, which is not trivial. But it shows why firmware integrity matters so much. It is not enough that the device has a secure chip. You have to be sure the code running on that chip is clean. 
So what do I do personally? I only update firmware through the official app. I double check that I'm on the real website and I am extremely allergic to any email or pop-up that tells me to download a critical patch from some random link. If a company releases an update, I expect to see that inside their own app, not in a Telegram DM. On top of that, I try to keep my host devices as clean as possible, because even a perfect hardware wallet cannot save you from a compromised laptop. One of the simplest but most effective pieces of malware out there is a clipboard hijacker. You copy a Bitcoin or Ethereum address. You think you pasted it into the send field, but in the background, the malware swaps it out for the attacker's address. If you are in a hurry and do not read the full address on your device's screen, you can confirm a transaction to wrong destination without realizing it until the coins are gone. This is why, in practice, I always treat the screen on the hardware wallet as the source of truth not the screen on my computer. When I'm sending funds, I slowly read the entire address on the device and compare it to what I expect. It is annoying, I know. It slows me down, but it is still faster than trying to recover funds that were sent to a scammer. Then there is the human side of this, which is honestly where I see most people failing, social engineering. If your email was ever part of a data leak, you can get very convincing messages that look like they come from your wallet manufacturer. They will talk about an urgent security issue, a new breach, a mandatory upgrade. They will try to push you to click a link or to verify your wallet by entering your recovery phrase. Sometimes scammers will even pose as support on Twitter or Telegram, replying the moment you mention a problem and sending you to a fake help page. Here's the rule I use for myself. No legitimate company will ever ask for my seed phrase. Not by email, not on a website, not in a chat. The only place those words ever appear is on the hardware wallet screen during setup or recovery and on the piece of paper or metal where I store them. If a human asks for the phrase, I know they are trying to rob me. You do not need to be a hardware engineer to be responsible. You do not need to be a hardware engineer to be reasonably safe. You just need a basic routine. Buy the device from a trusted source. Let it generate a new seed for you and write that offline. Set a strong pin and, if you are serious, a passphrase. Keep the firmware updated, but only from official channels. Use a clean computer. Double check addresses on the device screen. Keep your seed somewhere safe in the real world, not on the internet and assume that anyone asking for that seed is not on your side. If you follow those steps consistently, you are already doing more than most people, and you cut out the majority of practical attack paths. So, to wrap this up, I still believe hardware wallets are one of the best tools we have for self-custody. Personally, I'm using Cool Wallet Pro now, but they are not a set it and forget it solution. They are more like a very good lock. If you put that lock on a flimsy door or you leave the key under the mat, the lock does not matter. My goal with this video was not to scare you away from using hardware wallets, but to give you a realistic picture of where the real risks are and what you can do as a normal user to reduce them. If this helped you rethink your setup or spot a weak point you can fix, then it did its job. If you want more content like this, make sure you are subscribed and let me know in the comments what part of hardware wallet security you want me to talk about next. Thanks for watching, stay safe and I will see you in the next one.